Righto, so um, to make a Flemish string you don't need much. You just need uh, your string material. In this case we're dealing with Dynaflight 97 which is a BCY product. As far as I know they're the only ma string maker on the market. Oh, there's a couple of smaller ones. But Brownell's gone. You need a jig which is... Um, you just make it yourself. It's just a 2 by 4 or a 90 by 35 with a few nails and some markings and a couple of other stuff like some optional clips tape measure um, wax is handy uh, a, a sharp knife a uh, notepad because you'll be wanting to take some notes because um, yeah it's probably not I can give you maybe 90% of the instruction, but the other 11% will be um, up to trial and error, probably. Just with everyone's got different ways of doing the, the different techniques for a Flemish string. So, oh, another thing that's handy is a clamp for for clamping your your jig down to the bench. Um, Two colour strings always look better I reckon, but I'll show you a cool tip for making really good two colour strings that are very uniform and consistent, um, rather than the barber pole style, which is the two colours twisted together, it's a bit of a, a blended look, which is um, which is more consistent in the string, because uh, they can vary in thickness depending on the colour. I'll show you all that as we go along. So the first thing you want to do is, um, actually what I should show you is just the bow. So um, sometimes can be a bit, bit misleading depending on the string length that you're looking for. Best thing to do is get your bow, um, get it to a good brace height and then measure the string from right at the end to the other end. Uh, in inches and then that'll give you the the length of string you want to aim for Yeah, that's always the best method And in my case that's a 56 inch bow string for a 58 inch long bow, so People usually say oh, it's, it's got to be three inches shorter, but in this case it's two inches shorter, so always check on the jig um, this is where you start up the end here. I'll zoom in a bit. So these are the nails or pegs or whatever that you'll use to measure how many strands you're going to make. Um, I find 14 to be a good good number. Uh, gives you a good strength, good thickness, and it's enough to go easy up to about a hundred pound bow, maybe 80. And we're going to be starting on this peg here. Good knot for tying onto that peg is a, I think it's a clove hitch. But you can tie it this way, just two wraps. Um, I'll try that again. Let's move this so it's a bit clearer. Once around your finger. Another one. And put the top one over the bottom, under the bottom. Any knot will work. I just find that one easier to do quickly. So there you go, that's where you're going to start. Then what you're going to do is wrap your string all the way down to this bottom peg here. And then you're going to find your the nail. <coughs> or the peg for the right string length. So in this case it's 56 inches, which is this one here. So we're going to wrap it around here and then come all the way down to this bottom peg here and then go on the next next nail down from where we started up the top here. So your string pattern should look like this. 
So we're wrapped down here, up here around 56, down here, and then all the way back up onto the next strand. Now keep doing that until you have if you're only going to use one colour you'd go 7 because that's half of 14 so 7 in this case I'm going to keep going until I have let's say 4 so there's 2 strands Then I'm going to put that aside <coughs> and start with the next colour. <coughs> so what I've got here is the blue tied on to the same strand that I finished my black on. So it'll go over the black just once. There, we're going to finish off the blue as we have been going with the black to make seven strands because what we're going to do is make two bundles of seven so we make a 14 strand string. Always going back to this 56 inch peg Now some jigs will have the bow length on them, but um, I prefer to make my jig with the string length. I've got a bow length here, which I think I originally did, but I soon realised that it was better to have the string length, because you get a lot more um, accuracy there. Alright, so this is what you're looking for. got your black, you got your blue, we've got seven strands all up and then what we're going to do is take our knife, just hold these in case the string flicks up, just cut all the strands Oops. and then we're going to carefully hold it tight, we're going to pull the strands off So we should have a bundle that looks like this, half blue, half black. Take our wax and just wax up the ends, twist your finger around them. This will make it easier to twist them up. So I don't know if you can see that, but you can see they're staggered, that just makes a nice tapered string. Alright, grab the other end. See they're all over the place. Wrap your finger, give it some wax, and then do one more of these. If you're going to do a two color string that is like a barber pole, this would be all one color and then your next strand would be all another color. In this case I'm just going to repeat that. So I've got four strands of blue. Um, Sorry, four strands of black, three strands of blue. I'll do the same. Right, so now I've got two separate bundles of seven inch, different colours. And we're ready to start twisting. So now what we'll do is clamp the jig down just so we can use the pegs. You could use a separate peg if you like, if you didn't want to clamp, clamp the jig down. Um, but we've got some measurements here as well. Alright, first, first thing you want to do when you start twisting is get your two different bundles 
equal. Now I'm right-handed, um, and I grab the grab the the I don't know the tail I guess with the left hand, so I can do the twisting with my right hand. So in my case, um, I like to do fairly long tails. Um, so you can see I've got markings here, and you'll see it on the on the uh, tutorial for making the, the jig. I, I do remember there's a mistake in that video, but I don't remember what it is, so you'll be surprised. Okay, I've got some markings here. I think these are like 10 inches or whatever, 9 inches maybe. So I've started on a long bow. I don't think by memory this is that important. So down here there's a zero. So this is 9 inch. So what I'm going to do is pinch my thumbnail tightly here. And then just start twisting. So there's no dark art to this. <coughs> All you're doing is twisting it up. So in this case, what I do is grab the top one, twist it, um, rotate it away from me, grab the bottom one with my root finger, and then twist it under, and then move this this thumb a little bit over to hold the loop, the twist that you just made. Twist, twist forward, and then rotate it back on top. So twisting forward, coming back the other way. Twisting forward, coming back. Twisting forward, coming back. Twisting forward, coming back. It's awkward at first, but we get used to it. Twisting forward, coming back. Twisting forward, coming back. Now, while I'm doing this, I'm grabbing with this finger fairly tightly, and I'm pulling a little bit so the twists don't get too bunched up. So I'm just pulling them away so they're nice and spaced out, which you can see there. Sometimes they'll get bunched up if you do them too tightly. So I'm pulling pulling the string apart as I twist it, pull, so this hand's pulling this way, this hand's pulling this way, that'll just get you a nice consistent twist, so twist over, pull apart, and roll back, roll back while pulling apart, twist over, roll back, pull apart, there you go, should look like that, it may not look like that when you first start, but you'll get it. It's it's actually real basic. Okay, with a longbow, I like to do two and a quarter inch loops for both of them. With a recurve, I do three and a quarter inch loop for, at the top and then a two, two and a quarter inch loop at the bottom. Let me just measure this one. It's about two. Do a couple more twists. So, twist loop pulling apart. There you go. Oh, that's about two and a quarter. Okay, next step is where it starts to get a little bit trickier but still not too bad. Um, what you need to do is separate the two bundles again. Let me zoom out a bit. Separate the two bundles. Um, it's easier if you find the ends. Okay, so we're separating our bundles. Try not to let your string touch the floor if your floor's dirty because it'll get dust and crap in it, which could be abrasive. Okay, find your first loop. Now what we're going to do is just measure again, and like I said, I like to do a long bow at two and a quarter. That's about right. Okay, so this is the end of the string. This goes down to the main body. What we're going to do is take this part, 
just so we can join these two like this. I'll show you that again. So we're just going to start like this. This is the end. Nothing to it. It's even easier as well once you have a two colour string because you'll know that each colour goes with the corresponding colour and you'll have something like this. So one bundle and another bundle and each of them has that tail. Twist these together and the wax we applied earlier will help. Twist these together. Feel free to add more wax if you need to. My wax is just a homemade wax, but you can buy string makers wax, I think. Alright. Now what we're going to do, I grab my loop in the left hand. So, I've got my loop in the left hand. It's a bit dodgy because... I'm in an awkward position here that I'm not used to, but anyway, twist, twist these so they stay together, hold this tight, and all we're doing is exactly the same thing we did to make the first um, twist, so twist this over, roll this, twist it, roll it, all the while you're pulling it apart, not too, not too dramatically, but you're pulling it apart a bit, so it's you're hopefully laying the, the twists not on top of each other but next to each other. And it should start to look, look like this. Hopefully you can see that the light's not amazing in here but hopefully you'll get the idea. So also what you're gonna these are gonna twist up so just periodically separate the two bundles and keep twisting them up. Twist forward, roll back, twist forward, roll back, twist forward, roll back, twist forward, roll back. And my right hand is pulling away from my left hand. Twist forward, roll back. Separate the bundle because they're twisting up on each other. Do it about every five twists. I think I've twist the bundles together. Twist forward, roll back. Twist forward, roll back. Move your left hand up one notch. Twist forward, roll back. Twist forward, roll back. Separate. Twist forward, roll back. So you might have just seen. I just encountered one of the loose ends here. That's cool, just try and get them bundled up into the main body of the string as, as much as you can. And there's some more loose ends there. Just try and get them bundled up in there. Twist forward, roll back, forward, roll back. All the while the right hand's pulling away. Not pulling away now, but when I roll back it's pulling away. Just gives it a bit more tension in the string. Gives you a better quality string. So there's a view of it. You'll get some strands poking out, but that's cool. They that won't affect the the integrity of the string. Just do your best to get them all bundled up in there. Okay, so what I do, keep going until I get a 10 inch long um bundle or a splice I think they're called. So here's my zero and I've got a little red mark here at 10 inches. So I'll just keep going. There we go. There's 10 inches. Use a clip just to keep that one clipped. So the next step is um, doing your, your reverse or your back twists or your pre-twists which is a very important step in getting a string that's consistent and round. 
So we're on to the back twists. So you'll see what I mean in a sec. But what we basically need to do is introduce twists in each of the bundles and they'll get untwisted as we twist up the next slope. So what I like to do, <coughs> stand with, put one bundle down and basically stand with the bundle on my left. I'm going to be twisting it. What's this? Anti-clockwise. Now what I do is 32 back twists. You might, yours might vary, but this is where your trial and error might come in. So we've got a kink so we can visually see how many twists we're putting in. So all I do is count 32. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 30, 31, 32. So there's your 32. Then what we're going to do, just stow this bundle away and do the same thing with the next. Put a kink in the end and go counterclockwise with the string on your left. 31, 32. So we've got, now got two bundles that have been pre-twisted. We're going to stretch them out. Get the ends together. They should be the same length at this stage. If they're a bit different, it doesn't really matter too much. And then what we're going to do is repeat the first step. What we're going to do here it actually is get a bit more technical. And we're going to measure our length. Get our string out. Get your measuring tape. And measure. Now this is where you also might have a bit of trial and error, but try this first. We want to make 56 inch string. So what I've found over the years, I've made hundreds of strings, is to measure out two inches shorter than what your desired length is. So I want a 56 inch total string. I'm going to measure it to 54, pinch it off, and then use that as my next starting point. So this is, I've pinched it off at 54 from this loop. So this 54 should give me a finished string after it's all stretched of about 56 inches. So now what we're doing, same thing we did in the first place. Roll, back, roll, back, roll, back, all the while moving the string, pulling your hands apart. Like I said, longbow and recurve, I like the bottom loop to be two and a quarter inch. So there's two and a quarter, same step, get your, your bundles, you're going to look like this, just give it another measure. Uh, Same step, flip it over, join the two, you'll have a short one and a long one in each bundle, twist them together, again feel free to add more wax, get it to this point and just repeat the same step, twist, roll back, twist, roll back, twist, as we're rolling back, roll back, pull it apart a little bit, not too much, and don't be too tempted to make them really tight, because as you pull back, they'll get nice and tight and consistent. So our other, lens, our other end's still connected here. What you're going to have to do, as we did last time, is periodically separate the two strands, and just continue like that until you get to 10 inches. It's going to look like this. Just going to check my uh, splice here. That's roughly 10 inches, maybe a little longer, but that's fine. So you should have something like this. Nice little loop on the top for your little longbow tips. 
like I said last time, don't worry about these these little bits, they'll be fine. There you go, not too tight, but not not stacked up on top of each other. Okay, so now what you've got is you've got two loops, it's starting to look like a string now, separated by uh, the bundles which are now nicely opened up. So if we didn't do our back twists, the 32 back twists, if you remember back, these would be all twisted up now. And then when we go to twist the body of the string together, they'll get even more twisted. So the good thing now is these are nice and open. They're not twisted up, which means they'll blend nicely together when we twist up the string, which is what we're going to do now. Take your clip off, grab real tightly, just at the end of the loops and pull your string apart. Now what you should have is two equal length strands. What you don't want is one, one bundle longer than the other. Go this side. Okay, so I've got the string in front of me. It's to my right. Hopefully you can see them more. We're going to twist strings in my left hand. This is my right hand. The strings coming on my right side. We're going to now twist clockwise. And I'm going to do maybe 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And while you do this, you can also just go along. Get it nice and round. I don't remember how many I've done. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Again, just go, go over and make it nice and round. Put a couple more in just to be safe. Thirteen, fourteen, let's say fifteen. Alright, and there, ladies and gentlemen, you have two loops. In this case, they're pretty much the same size. You have two 10 inch long splices. And you have a body that's nice and round, 14 strands together. Now I've got some tricks to show you later in the next part while we serve it to get it even nice, even rounder. So you basically get a full, just a full tight cylinder of string. That's the first part. Second part is adding um, serving. And then and then adding silences if that's what you want. So anyway, there you go. Any questions, chuck them down in the comments. And I'll get back to you in a couple of days with part two about serving. Cheers.